Hi, welcome to another video. So, Google has launched anti-gravity. Well, it's more of windsurf with Gemini 3 slapped on top of it rather than a new experience. I'll talk about everything that is going on. But first, let's talk about what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be what AI editors are becoming. You get autocomplete, an agent, and a new agent view to manage agents similar to what Cursor has, or perhaps more similar to Verdant, if you have used that. It takes a lot of cues from many different things, and it has some weird vibes when you start using it. This is available on Mac, Windows, and Linux. You can download and install it, and it will ask you if you want to import from Windsurf, Cursor, or stuff like that as well. And then it gets started. But before we do that, a quick word from today's sponsor, Augment Code. This isn't your average AI assistant. Augment Code is an enterprise-grade AI built for real engineering teams working in massive, fast-moving code bases, not toy apps or vibe coding. It's far superior than Windsurf and Cursor because of its proprietary context engine that delivers millisecond-relevant snippets even across 100k file monorepos, feeding your entire repo, even millions of lines, into the best model available in real time. You get smart, in context suggestions that make sense for your production code with Claude Sonnet 4 Plus Augment Context delivering the best quality at the same price. No model picker needed. Augment upgrades for you automatically. There's no need to switch editors. Augment works seamlessly in VS Code, JetBrains, Vim, and even Cursor. No forks, no compromises. It's secure by default and never trains on your code and supports customer-managed encryption keys. You're only billed for successful requests. That's paper message pricing, no seat licenses, or complicated token math. Augment recently launched powerful new features like remote agents, which let you launch, monitor, and merge pull requests from parallel cloud workers without draining your local CPU. If you're ready to code with AI that keeps up with you, sign up for a free 14-day trial at augmentcode.com. Link is in the description. Now, back to the video. This is what it looks like. Well, it looks a lot like Windsurf. If I switch between anti-gravity and Windsurf, then you'll see that it looks basically the same. The icons of the files are a clear giveaway. These colorful icons were exclusive to Windsurf, and I have seen some Windsurf designers back in the day talking about it on Twitter. So, it basically uses the same agentic harness and everything as Windsurf. It looks more like the older version of Windsurf as well, because after Cognition bought them, they made a good amount of changes to it, and it looks different now. But if you've daily driven windsurf like I had for a while, then it looks very similar to the older version. If you don't know how this is happening, then this is because Google basically bought windsurf's technologies, or basically the code, and their top executives, including the founders and CEO. The founders basically sold the code and mostly abandoned the company, and they were also hired by Google as part of the deal. So, they moved over to Google DeepMind, and now that same team at Google DeepMind has launched this. After Windsurf was left in such a situation, it got sold to Cognition, the makers of Devon, who are basically now managing it. The code and product are like blatantly Windsurf, with almost no changes. Like this settings panel. So, if you go here and hit the settings, then this opens up a panel and you can do the same in Windsurf as well. And they both look basically the same. Even the tooltip says the same things, with basically the cascade name replaced with agent. Like, the auto fix lint errors has the exact same tooltip message as in cascade. The customizations page is also the same as Windsurf. There are a ton of things which are basically just Windsurf, but I won't talk about that because you get the point. Now, let's talk about how you use it. Well, one way is pretty simple. An editor opens up, and on the right, it opens up the agent, where you can easily give it your prompt. And the agent will just work on the task, similar to most of the agentic editors that you have seen. Apart from that, almost everything is the same as Windsurf. So, I won't go into too much detail about that either. Instead, 
let's only talk about the thing that is new here, and that is the agent manager. The agent manager is more like a low-budget version of Verdant, if you have used that. I have used Verdant for a fair bit. It is really thoughtfully made, and it is very similar to this. It was the first interface that sold me on the whole agent management interface. They were not the only ones, though. Most of the Claude Code UIs, and things like Conductor and whatnot, have also had similar architectures. But I really liked the implementation of Verdant as the best. It was also a fork of VS Code, I believe, but more stripped down to only work with the agent panel. So, they are trying to basically make something along those lines. But it's nowhere near the intuitiveness that any of the aforesaid tools provide. Basically, on the left, you can see the projects and tasks running in each one of them. You can open different projects, and they appear there, and you can navigate through there and start a new thread. In the inbox, you can see the pending tasks and tasks that need your attention. Anyway, here, I'll ask it to do one of my benchmark questions, which is a harder question, and you'll see that it goes ahead and makes an implementation plan and then starts working on it as well. It's pretty simple and quite easy to use. In a bit, it gets done. And well, it gave me two errors, which I asked it to fix, and then it worked. And it worked kind of fine, which is kind of cool. So, this was a fine experience. Then, we got the Go TUI calculator, and that was also great. It worked well, but it also had one error, which needed to be fixed. Then, we got the Godot game, and well, for some reason, it also didn't work. Even after trying for three prompts, it didn't work. I try not to exceed the three prompt rule of mine, but I did five prompts for this, and it still didn't pass. The Svelte benchmark was also a fail, because it needs to be a long running task, and it just errors out after a while. Similarly, the Nuxt app and Tari app also don't work for the same reason, and it's not a good experience. It is currently extremely buggy, and the agent harness of this just doesn't hold up with Gemini 3. It makes it worse in most cases. One of the things that it does, which may be new for some people, is that it can use a browser to check if the work has been finished. I believe that this is quite nonsense. This was added in Klein when 3.7 Sonnet added support for browser use, and this has existed via Stagehand MCP, DevTools, and whatnot for a while. For my use cases, it almost never fetches any good result because it looks at the UI and tells me that it is good even though there are blatant UI issues or even straight up errors in some cases. The agent harness is not good. It tries to save tokens in most cases, which nets worse results, and it's just not a good experience. The UI feels super bolted on and nothing seems cohesive. It feels like using Pair AI if you've ever used that. It feels vibe-coded with 3.5 Sonnet at the current moment. I have extreme respect for Google DeepMind, but this is not a quality product and should have been delayed before releasing. Also, I don't get why this is even built. Didn't we already have Firebase Studio that does the same thing where you get a Bolt-like interface and VS Code switch option? And doesn't the Gemini Code Assist VS Code extension also do the same thing and give you autocomplete as well as Gemini agentic capabilities? And doesn't the Gemini CLI also do the same thing? I won't compare Jules because it's remote, but the other ones are all trying to do the same thing. I feel that you can use it to get some free credits and stuff and use Gemini 3 but it's not something that I'd pay for in its current state, or even use for free. That's majorly about it. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.